Hey guys, it's Drake again with the RPG Construct. So, today I'm going to be going through another one of these Call of Cthulhu um, 7th edition how-to videos. And today we're going to talk about sanity. My favorite part of this whole game is sanity. Mainly because it is so easy to completely lose your mind and go insane. And you actually have to roleplay that out. So, um, it's actually quite exciting knowing the players that I will probably have in these games. Um, how they're going to do that. So, kind of just jumping right in. What is sanity? Um, basically, your ability to control your own mind, you know, to process information, to function like a normal human being, to function in society. Um, the way that this kind of mythos works, the Cthulhu mythos is, um, these things are terrible and horrible, and um, seeing anything related to this mythos is difficult for the human mind to comprehend um, and it can have some really interesting effects as you are exposed to it more. So first thing, you have a number of sanity points. Okay, That number when you far, first start out as an investigator is equal to your power number. Right, It makes sense because power is um, you know, more like your, your mental fortitude and stuff like that. So when you first start, let's say it's 50. It's equal to that. And on your character sheet, you'll have a little section that has 1 to 99, uh, excuse me, 0 to 99, and you just circle the one that, that you're at, okay? So whenever you get into a situation where you see a creature from this mythos, or even the aftermath of this creature, or you know somebody brutally murdered and torn apart, this is going to have an effect on you psychologically, right? So you would make a sanity roll. And just like your normal roll, you get your um, number or lower, whatever your skill is at, and you succeed, and you're good. If you don't, obviously that's a failure. Okay, so in just a normal scene, that's all. All it is. You may, you know, you may jump in fright, you may cry out in terror, um, you may make a noise. You know, you're trying to be quiet, and you just involuntarily um, scream in terror. You might just freeze. You might just randomly punch something. You know, just those fear reactions that we all have. So keep that in, in mind. Um, also, a little tidbit here. Bonus and penalty dies never go onto sanity rolls. There is no case where you can have an advantage or disadvantage when it comes to sanity. It just is. Okay, so keep that in mind. So in the bestiary, in kind of the appendix that goes through all the creatures, or at least the basic creatures here, something like a ghoul. You know, you, you investigators uh, go down in, into a tomb. Um, you hear, you know, noises of crunching and slurping and chewing. And you walk into this open tomb where two creatures have pushed off the top of this, like, sarcophagus type thing. They have pulled the body out, this recently dead body. And you see these two ghouls, like gnawing and, you know, crunching and eating the flesh off of this recently deceased corpse, okay? This is going to affect you, all right? So something like a ghoul, right, in its stats, it's going to have a sanity rating. And in this particular one, it's a 1 and then a slash and then 1d4. What that means is, is if seeing them, you make your sanity roll, you take one point, of sanity, basically you remove one point of sanity from yourself if you succeed. If you fail it, you roll a 1d4 and you subtract that amount. And every creature has that. And it can be at the DM's discretion if it's a scene and it's not a creature in itself, just the aftermath. It can be at the DM's discretion, but you make your sanity roll, maybe it's a 4, 6, 8, 10, whatever it is. When it comes to your maximum sanity, you are going to start out equal to your power, as I've said. But your maximum normally can only, only go up to 99. But how sane you are is in direct correlation with your exposure and understanding of the Cthulhu Mythos. So you have a skill, which is the Cthulhu Mythos in the, uh, on your character sheet. Whatever that skill is, you deduct it from 99, and that is your maximum that you can have. So for example, if you really wanted this character to understand this universe and he he or she um, you know, ha is skilled in this, maybe a 20 or 25, the max that you can have is 99 
minus that 25 skill. So it would be something like 74. Okay, so the more you know about the, the Cthulhu world, Cthulhu mythos, the less sane you are. All right, um, when your eyes get opened, your mind, you know, kind of goes crazy. So, insanity. Okay, if you um, take a large amount of sanity damage, basically, that is, you take more than five points of sanity damage or subtract more than five points, five points or, or more, in one situation. Not a whole scene, just seeing one thing, like in one roll, okay? More than five. You will become temporarily insane, okay? Now, temporary insanity typically takes 1d10 hours, okay, to kind of fade away. So you're not permanently there, um, but you're going to be acting a little weird for those 10 hours, and we'll get into it, well, 1d10, whatever it is. It could be an hour, it could be 10 hours. When it comes to combat, um, you just kind of have to play it as you go, okay? So we'll talk about that in a minute. With regards to insanity, there's three types, okay? There's temporary insanity, which I've said is um, just 1d10 hours is what it's going to be. Then you have indefinite insanity. There's really not a set um, number of how long that is, but it's going to be a while, months. You're going to be indefinitely insane. You're going to require treatment, psychotherapy, all that stuff to help you to recover from that. So you may be able to function a little bit, but you're, it's going to be difficult. And you get indefinite insanity when you lose one-fifth of your sanity points in one day or one session. So if you do a typical online game three or four hours, you're, um, and you lose, you have 50 sanity points, you lose 11, you're indefinitely insane if you lose it that, that day, okay? Um, also, if there's more than one creature, say there's two ghouls, you're only gonna make that roll once. There could be a hundred of them. It's just the initial shock of seeing them. So you're only gonna get that, that one time. And then, of course, you have permanent insanity, which means you have no sanity points left, you have used them all, you are done. For all intents and purposes, you're incurable. You uh, become basically part of the background in the scene. Um, you no longer can really control it as a player, um, and that, for all intents and purposes, that character is done. Okay. Um, one other thing, when it comes to... Um, when it comes to being temporarily insane, once you roll that, you know, you take that, um, you take, you fail that roll, that sanity roll, and you take that damage more than five, okay? You then, the keeper has to ask you to make an intelligence roll. And this is the tricky part. If you succeed on the intelligence roll, you become insane. If you fail the, the intelligent role, or you become temporarily insane, if you fail the intelligence role, you don't. And that is because what they're saying is you lost, you failed your sanity role, but then in your mind, do you really comprehend what you just saw? And if the answer is no, you just repress it quickly and just move on, basically you fail the intelligence, then you're okay. If you realize what you saw and the scope of what you saw, you go temporarily insane. So, when you go insane, what happens? There's a bunch of effects and a bunch of r random tables, which I think is so much fun. Um, and insanity starts with a bout of madness, okay? If this is in combat, if this happens in combat, this is gonna be 1d10 combat rounds, okay? Um, if not, probably, like I said, you know, 1d10 hours, just like the regular, um, just like the regular stuff. So. In this bout of madness, you roll a 1d10. And I'm just going to read out of the book here. Um, you can suffer from amnesia, a psychosomatic disability, you know, violence, paranoia. Um, you know, you may you may mistake somebody that you see for somebody of significance in, in your life that's maybe not there, but you're just seeing things. You could faint, you could flee in panic, um, you could have you know emotional outbursts or physical hysterics. Um, or you could develop a mania or a phobia, right? And there is a D100, two D100 tables for mania and phobia 
in the Keeper's Guide. And it's things like, you know, fear of flying, fear of heights, all the way to fear of surgical operations, fear of the number 13. Um, you know, so phobias, obviously, you're going to develop that. So if you're scared of, you know, the color green, I think it's on there, um, and it's seeing the, ne the next thing, it's going to affect you while you're going through this bout of, of madness. The other thing you have is, uh, is mania. Now, mania is like an obsession or compulsion. So just give an example. Um, you can uh, have an excessive desire to stay in bed, abnormal desire for cold and or cold things, excessive devotion to accumulating facts. There's all these weirdness. And from a role play standpoint, it could actually be a lot of fun. Um, I think rolling a 9 or a 10 on these would be a lot of fun, but the keeper is going to kind of take you through it um, as you roll. So you, um, this initial bout of madness that happens when you go insane, you're going to have to role play that. Um, you know, of course, unless you just faint and you faint for 1d10 rounds and then you really don't have to roleplay it. You just lay on the floor. So um, that is the initial thing that happens. But after it, after that bout of madness where you pretty much lose control of your character at, at that point, um, it's all about that madness. It isn't so much concentrating on what's around you, but it's all about the madness. Um, phase two of the insanity is something called underlying insanity. So you may be back in control of, of your character, but it's still lingering. It's still there. Um, and it's basically like a lower level, you know, a, a lower level of insanity. Um, you know, like I said, you give the control of the player back um, to the player. Um, but, you know, maybe you can talk about that, include that in your, in your backstory or something along those lines. The thing about it is, until the insanity is over, Okay, if you take any other sanity damage, okay, um, you, you roll a 1d10 to see how long this underlying, when you're temporarily insane, how long this underlying in insanity lasts after the initial, okay? If you take even a single point of sanity, you know, subtract even a single point of sanity damage um, during that time, let's see, hold on. Uh, it, it will result in another bout of madness, okay? So you could be just getting through it. You could be, you know, on the way out. It's getting better. You're starting to feel better. All of a sudden, you turn the corner and you see something. You take one more point of damage. The whole cycle starts over. Probably a different madness, a different phobia, whatever. Um, so it's kind of one of those things where you could be on, on a roller coaster, and unless you just stay in one place for an extended period of time, which is not always an option, um you know, it, it may just start over. So, and again, um, there's a bunch of, of, of roll tables here where it, it explains things, um, what you want to do, blah, blah, blah. The cool thing is when you're insane, the keeper can ask you to do a reality check. So if you're really just out there and you turn the corner and you see something, the keeper can... Um, ask you to make a, a reality check. And what that basically means is you are going to basically make make a roll um, based off of your sanity points. And if you fail, the keeper is going to tell you what you see. But what you see is not really what's there. If you succeed, then he'll tell you or she'll tell you exactly what's there. So, um, and again, this is more, more creati creativity for the keeper. But... Um, you know, it may be your two friends standing there, but you see two of those ghouls because they're still etched in in your mind. And you, you know, your first thought is pull out your, your revolver and shoot them. You know, something along those lines if you fail that reality check. Um, and if you, if you, by the way, if you fail that reality check, you also, you also take one point of sanity uh, away. Um, but like I said, if you succeed, it, it's all explained. Uh, let's see here. Go to the next one. So what about recovery, right? What happens? Well, when it comes to temporary in insanity, it's basically 1d10 hours, okay? So you're, you're really affected. You, you went a little crazy, but you've come back, you know, to, to reality now. And it could be something like going home in a restful place and getting a good night's sleep. 
or um, going home in a safe place, comfortable place, and having some tea or something like that. Just a few hours of just chilling out, um, and you can be cured of temporary insanity. Okay? When it comes to indefinite in insanity, we're talking about uh, basically private care or being institutionalized. You have to put all of your efforts into healing yourself. Okay, from this insanity. That's treatment, that's uh, psychotherapy, blah, blah, blah. So um, if it's private care, private care is probably the best one to use if you can afford it. So it's basically the best care available. Um, let's see here. Best care available is at home with some friendly place. Um, nursing can be tender, consider blah, blah, blah. Uh, to determine the success of treatment with private home care, you roll a 1D100. On a 1 to 95, it's a success. Add 1d3 sanity points for psychiatric medications or psychoanalysis. Uh, this is followed by a sanity roll for the investigator. If the roll is successful, the investigator is cured of their insanity. If the roll is unsuccessful, then a further sanity roll may be attempted in one month's time. So, it can take a short, you know, once you're there for a, a little while, you can make this roll, right? If you fail it, you try again in a month, but you're out of commission for that long. Okay. Um, if you do, uh, if you roll a 96 to 100, um, you basically your character rebels against this treatment, and you take 1d6 sanity points of damage, um, and you basically don't progress or anything, and you can't try it again until next month. Okay. That is the best care. You have basically a 95% chance of uh, of success there. All right. Um, and I understand that the sanity stuff, in a one-shot, it's probably not going to come to play when it comes to recovery, but anybody who's going to do campaigns is going to want to know this stuff, okay? The next is uh, if you're going to be in, in an institution, um, sa same thing, um, 1 to 50 is a success, add 1d3 sanity points, um, basically, and... After that, uh, you follow it with a sanity roll. If it's a success, you are cured uh, of this insanity. So um, keep in mind, you can't use luck points. So a roll is a roll. There's no bonus die. There's no penalty die. A roll is a roll. Um, so good luck with that one. So temporary, said insanity is 1d10 hours. Um, indefinite is indefinite until you're cured, however long it takes. It could be months. It could be years. Depends how bad your dice roll. Um, so... A few things here. I just kind of wanted to give some, some examples here. So when it comes to sanity loss, um, I'm just going to give you a few points and what that means. If you have one to two points of sanity loss, um, you have some discomfort and uneasiness, um, something gnawing in the corner of your mind, um, you know, hardly really noticeable, but you know it's there. Three to four points is disgust or the feeling that something is wrong there. Um, this may manifest in vomiting. Uh, momentary stupefaction or shivering, okay? Um, five to nine is fear, panic, disorientation, enough to cause a potential episode of temporary insanity. Um, this represents a major shock leading to uncontrollable physical reactions um, and or um, disassociation with surroundings and people. 10 to 19, which is the big stuff, mind warping horror, hair changes to white, violent physical reactions to self and to others, uh, mental shutdown, sudden character change, you know, raving and delusions, etc. 20 points plus. This is the big stuff. Ultimate cosmic evil, beyond humanity's ability to comprehend. The mind is broken and will take a long time to return to sanity, if ever. And if a way can be found, that person will never be the same again. Uh, basically results in certain indefinite insanity. So, with regards to that, It sounds like you can become insane very, very easily, and you can, but unless it's a big deal, because not a, you're not going to face a lot of things that have, um, you know, and they're not roll 1d10s for sanity and stuff like that, a lot of 1d4s and stuff like that, but if you know as a character that you saw this and you know, you know, maybe you shouldn't be the first one through, through the door, just something, I don't know. I would think if I knew that I just took a hit on, on my sanity, I would be a little bit more um, careful with what I do. Which is, again, another thing that I love about this particular game system is that it's really based in reality. You're going to, self preservation is huge here. Um, so, with regards to that, hope I explained it with the how the damage is done and what um, and how to recover it. But, 
how do you increase your sanity points? That same 50 that we had, how do we increase it, right? Well, a few things. At the end of each session, the keeper can award um, sanity points. So the keeper can say, you know, give me 1d6 roll and award that many sanity points for something that they did, something they've been through at the keeper's discretion at the end of the session, okay? Also, um, if a character increases their any skill above 90%, um, you can add 2d6 sanity points. That's any skill that in, in this session um, you brought it to over um, 90%. Right, you add two d six, so that could be as many as twelve more sanity points. Right, um, basically the reward represents the discipline and self esteem gained in mastering any skill. So again, it just strengthens your your mind. Um, the other option is psychotherapy. You can go through basically psychotherapy, and you can return sanity points um, to the investigator patient. So you make a D100 roll against the analyst or doctor's psychoanalysis skill once per month. If the roll succeeds, the patient gains 1D6 sanity points. If the roll fails, add, add no points, etc., etc. Um, you can also just do it yourself, um, just with learning and stuff like that. But um, basically. Well, basically, you can do, do it yourself um, through, again, this is more for campaigns and everything, and uh, if you fulfill certain factors, you basically add 1d6 sanity points to you. So just keep that in, in mind. The final thing that I want to talk about okay, is something that in the book, it's, ca it's called getting used to the awfulness. This game is tough. These scenarios are tough. And yes, it's very difficult to see these things and stuff like that. But keep in mind, if you see a ghoul once or twice, and then you see it a third time, do you really think it's going to have that shock value? So no. So at the DM's discretion, or the keeper's discretion, maybe if they make a successful sanity save, if they've seen this before, it's a zero instead of a one. Just keep that in mind, because every time you see a ghoul eating a corpse, it's not going to have the same effect if you've seen it half a dozen times, right? So, again, guys, this was sanity. I know there's a lot of rules, but I think kind of we, we went through them. Just know that if you take more than five sanity points, you're going to go temporarily insane. You're going to have a bout of madness, and it's going to be a role player's dream uh, just to do something weird. So anyway, guys, I hope that explained it um, to the best of my ability. If there's anything I missed, like I said, please comment. Let, let me know. I will absolutely um, you know, add it. There's a bunch of optional rules and stuff like that, as I've said, but I do not um, go in the optional rules right now because I don't want to confuse people. So all right, guys, stay tuned. The next one I'm going to be doing is going to be magic in Call of Cthulhu. And um, up until page 200, I didn't even know that there was magic in here. So... Thanks, guys, for watching, and see you next time.